Welcome back, everyone. It is time for movie news with the Lou's. Happy Friday, Chris. Happy Lou. Friday. And it is extremely happy today. Because. Okay. Because one of the movies that I have been very excited and waiting for is out now, and it is called If. This is written and directed by and starring Mr. John Krasinski. And everything that comes out of his brain is absolutely fantastic. From obviously we loved him on The Office as Jim, and then he has, you know, created the Quiet Place world, and now this. And um, it's about a young girl. She goes through a difficult experience and begins to see everyone's imaginary friends. And that's what IF stands for. I, IF, I, F, imaginary friend. Oh. Oh, there we go. I was late to that party. Same, same, same. <laughs> and guess what? Every person is in this, because, but mostly vocally. Ryan Reynolds is the only actual person person. And then the little girl, which if you watch Walking Dead, she was on Walking Dead. But listen to this lineup of people that are doing the vocal stylings. Like I said, we have Ryan Reynolds, Steve Carell. We got him. We've got Emily Blunt, Matt Damon, Maya Rudolph, John Stewart, Sam Rockwell. Ah, oh, Sebastian Maniscalco, my favorite comedian. Uh, Blake Lively, Amy Schumer, even George Clooney, and Bradley Cooper. And Bradley Cooper is so good in The Guardians as the raccoon. So um, he's really funny. George so, Clooney, how did I get that I one? Know. I know. George Clooney's doing everything now because he's doing this and he's going to Broadway. He's got it all going on. Well, dang. But wow. I'm very, very excited about this movie because it's a sort of a should encompass an entire family feel. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, yeah, I'm very excited about that. And then um, there is another release out. It is about Amy. Winehouse, Back to Black, and this is the biopic of the jazz singer turned pop star, and sort of like, you know, traces her life and rise to fame leading up to the release of her studio album, Back to Black. Sam Taylor Johnson, who was responsible for Fifty Shades of Grey, directs this film, and, you know, of course, she was troubled and uh, left us too, way too young. And then Marissa Abela, who stars in this, did the singing herself in the film because she trained extensively to mimic Winehouse's vocals. Wow. Yeah. Although, Maddie, tell Chris what you said. I just don't think they did enough to make her look like Amy Winehouse. So I can't, I don't see it. You can't get with it? I can't get with can't it, but now that I know it? that she's saying everything, now mm -hmm. I'm like, well, I should definitely not pass judgment before I've seen it. Like give a little, look. oh, Jeremy does that all the time. <laughs> Passes oh, yeah. judgment on every movie before I see it, without anyway. seeing it, unless it's called Downton Abbey, of which he was oh. very excited to share a piece of information oh, with I me that I already show. knew I talked about that you. the 107th Downton Abbey movie that I will sleep through is going to be released and we will go <laughs> see it together Lose. just like we always have maddie you're invited we're getting if cocktails you, if you well then that'll really put me into nap so. right <laughs> oh i already talked about you i talked about my brave review and i said and i text chris loser and she's like i can wait <laughs> i can't I wait. wait on this one now i will let me just preface the Downton Abbey thing. I did not watch the show, so I wasn't, you know, embodied, uh, you know, the character. I didn't love the characters. However, the director could have slightly introduced these characters to me in a nutshell, and he did not, and tell me that is a wrong of him. Jeremy. I love it. Kay. I'm not part of this. One, <laughs> one more uh, release this weekend. I saw the TV glow. It's a scary one. Two teens uh, bond over their love of a supernatural TV show, and it's mysteriously canceled. And then <laughs> the scary ensues. Oh. Mm -hmm. Yes, so, it does. So supernatural TV show gets canceled. Yes. Seriously. And, and then it uh, do they causes. Go, do they pop into the TV show? Yeah. What happens? You'll have to watch to find out. And you don't watch scaries, so I know you won't see it. That's why we need <laughs> movie news with the lose yes. to tell us what's going to happen. <laughs> Although Maddie and I do love Pleasantville when they get sucked into the TV. We should the go black and white. Wire. Oh, I love that I movie. I love that movie. I yeah. love that movie. Okay. Uh, speaking of Krasinski, let's make it all about him today. I did a little rewind review because I just want to, you know, hit the incredible talents of him because he's very funny. He can do comedy. He can do all the things. And he's excellent in suspense, like I mentioned, Quiet Place. But 
early on in his career. He was in 2016's 13 Hours. Okay, this is a um, about an attack on the United States compound in Libya. So it's very like a political uh, suspense movie, but he's so good in this and he tries to, you know, make chaos, make sense out of the chaos. But here's the thing, also we knew him as Jim Halpert. Then all of a sudden I see him in 13 hours and he's all buffed out and I was like, oh, so John Krasinski's hot too, interesting. Yeah. Wait, what's mm -hmm. the other one he did and he's really buffed out in it, and it's a TV series, Jack yes. Ryan or something? Uh, or, uh, yes, uh, uh, Jack Ryan. The, right? yeah, yeah, Jack he, Ryan. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He does that, and that's really action. And it's happening. like, what, he is there anything he can't do? And uh, when we had a chance, like Quiet Place was my favorite movie of that year a few years ago, and then you know how at the Critics' Choice that you may just random stumble on your best yeah. encounters at the bar? Uh -huh. So this extraordinarily tall guy at the bar, slick white jacket, it, and I'm like, oh, that's him. I'm going in for the kill. And I told him, you know, it was my favorite movie of the year. And he was so, so nice. Yeah. And what's funny, right. at that time, I had not watched The Office because I binged it right after. Well, I he was, probably I was, was late to the office if you party. didn't go straight to the office. He probably oh, yeah. gets that all the mm -hmm. time. And yeah. again, I wished I had more of a conversation with his wife. Yeah. She was lovely. She gave me all the time in the world. At the end, I ran into him at the very end, so it was in passing a quick photo. He was still lovely. I wished I had more time with him, though. Yeah, he is so talented. And I think this is just the start. I mean, like, Quiet Place and If and things like that. So and by the way, very he excited. is very nice about it, Maddie, I was going to say, too, because he's gone on the Office Ladies podcast several yes. times. Yes. With oh, okay, yeah, he was He's just not afraid on. to talk about it. He was just he was just on, and he admitted he stole the Dunder Mifflin sign on the last day uh, of filming, the framed one, yeah. and had lied to uh, Greg Daniels, the creator of the show, that he didn't do it. But he did. So, there cat's out of the bag, Jim. Well, thanks, Chris. We'll see <laughs> thanks. you in a second hour with Kev. Coming up, our friend Jill Barron of Remington's Kitchen is here with some food that smells so good, we cannot wait to eat it all. Breakfast. We'll be back. Mm -hmm. I smell 